Hello, welcome again to our virtual book club. I'm Anissa Abbas Higgins and I'm talking to you again today about Winter in Sokoto by Elisa Shua Duzapin, which I translated and which was published earlier this year by Daunt Books Publishing. Um, I thought we'd talk today a little bit about some of the imagery in the book. Um, this is this this is a book which is not driven so much by plot as as by the sensory images in the book. It's full of taste, smell, but most of all of visual imagery. And I realised when I was working on the book that this that the only way I could I could do this translated into English was that I had to be able to see and describe the images that, that Elisa's descriptions created in my own head. And I spent a great deal of time communicating with her to be sure that I had, that I was conveying the image in the way that she wanted it to be conveyed. So it was really so much a process, not just of looking at the words and translating the words, but of seeing the images for myself and finding the English words obviously as close as possible to the French words to describe those images in English. And similarly, when I was working with Jelka, the editor of this book, we were really trying to repeat the same process, making sure that the, the, the words on the page created for the, re the reader the most vivid possible image according to what Elisa had described. So we have this book which is about an artist and it's about a young woman trying to communicate and looking at the work that the artist is producing. And his work in this case is of the town where the young woman lives. It's a town that he knows nothing about, he doesn't understand it at all. And he is, he, he, he is really in a way using the young woman to see the town better. He wants to be able to see it through her eyes she resents this she wants to help him see it but at the same time he wants him to see it for himself she wants him to see it for himself and she wants him most of all to see her he wants she wants to be seen for who she is and what she is behind the drawings too is also this idea of perfection we have these wonderful descriptions of the artist Caron creating his drawings. Um, if you look at pages 19 and 20, that's one of the first descriptions. When we see him, we watch her watching him, spying on him, putting pen to paper and creating a woman on a page out of, out of nothing, out of a blank page. And it's a woman who often comes to life. We see her throwing her head back, laughing. Um, we hear her laughing even though this is just an image on the page. Um, the young woman realises at some point, or I think Caron actually tells her, that one of the, th the reasons that he doesn't like to talk about his rough drafts or show his, his work to anyone until it's finished is that when he's drawing in ink on the page, it has to be perfect because once the ink is placed, once the mark is made on the page, that's it, he can't erase it. And the woman that he wants to create in this in this last of his series has to be a woman who's perfect. She has to be a woman, he says, for all time. A woman who can exist in any time and in any place. So this idea of perfection is another thing that permeates the novel. We have this idea of um, you have to be physically perfect. You have to conform to the ideals of, of, of beauty and perfection. Um, the young woman's boyfriend, Jun Oh, he's 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 training to be a model, and he's quite happy to have plastic surgery to have his features all. But he suggests that the young woman should do the same. Um, there's a a, a a young another young woman staying in this seedy, rundown, out of the way guest house who's recovering from plastic surgery herself, and there are some wonderful visceral descriptions of her picking the scabs off her face. Um, elsewhere in the novel, um, we look at the, 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 the soup that the young woman's mother is trying to make her drink and she sees bits of cabbage, bits of kimchi floating around on the surface of the, the, the soup and it reminds her of the scabs on the woman's face. So these brilliant images, which I think stand out even more against the stark white brightness of the winter cold in this town of Sokcho. 
So um, I think um, I think if, as as we read it, if we if if we allow ourselves to get lost in these images and to see them, to take time to linger over them, to see them for ourselves, to watch how this artist draws his 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 story on the page and of course it all leads up to the most wonderful mysterious haunting image on the in the last page of the book when we see this 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 what the artist has left behind um he's 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 gone um well i shouldn't tell you about the end i won't tell you about how the book ends but just to just to to alert just to to alert you to the fact that that, that at the end of the book we have a, a a very beautiful, very haunting and mysterious image of how all of this resolves itself. So I hope this has given you some, some more ideas to enhance your reading of this, this wonderful novel. And um, in our next talk, we'll come back to some of the other themes in the novel. Okay, thank you very much. Goodbye.